I shall now introduce our distinguished guest, Mizuna Stubbs, to the assembly. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the actress and performer we honor now first stepped out and into the public view as a dancer in the 1950s, and she simply hasn't stopped moving since. Generations know and love Una Stubbs, and her work spans not only a seemingly impossible number of decades, but a dizzying range of genres too. She's been third dancer from the left in the chorus line and review show, and performed leading roles in classic British film and TV favorites. She's navigated the heavy demand of light entertainment and appeared in highbrow fare at the National Theatre. She was a star of children's TV, and all the geeks out there will give her 10 million call points having Benedict Cumberbatch's mobile number. <laughs> her recent scene-stealing turn in Sherlock means she'll probably still be getting great parts in the decades ahead when the young viewers now finding and appreciating her work for the first time, become programme commissioners. Una Stubbs' longevity is remarkable and admirable in itself, especially in such an infamously fickle and fashion-prone industry. What's even more inspiring is that here is a career still on an upward trajectory. 60 years in the business means there is shrewdness in her selection of acting roles, but there is also an open, searching spirit in forming the choices. Una Stubbs has sought out the work that tests her, makes new demands, and draws on untapped ability. When it has looked really tough, she has chosen to jump in anyway. It's pleasing to find that someone who feels like family is sort of one of ours. Una grew up in Hinkley, just down the road. One of her first memories is hearing German bombs hit Coventry, a dozen or so miles away, as she sat under the dining table. The family moved south, and age 14, Una took her first career step at La Roche Dance School in Slough. It was her real first love, and the beginning of her real education. She praises her parents for encouraging in her something rewarding that she still loves. To follow the career from there is a step lightly through familiar, yet lost and lovely versions of Britain. In the mid-1950s, Una was cover girl of Dairy Box Chocolates. She first appeared on telly with Dougie Squire's dancers on the marvellously hip-sounding Call for Cats. She worked in cabaret, clubs, reviews, and dance ensemble. Her first major screen roles were in Summer Holiday and Wonderful Life, and thus Una was woven forever into the internal bank holiday of national consciousness, a Britannia in Capri pants. Soon afterwards came the controversial, attitude-challenging Till Death Us Do Part. She appeared in 40 Towers as Aunt Sally in Wurzel Gummidge, her only real villain, <laughs> opposite John Pertwee, and in Give Us a Clue, which we can't speak about, of course. The recent TV CV includes Midsummer Murders, Heartbeat, Casualty, EastEnders, Benadorm, and work with comedy heroes like Victoria Wood and Catherine Tate. It's impressive stuff. We might almost call her a fixture if the secret of her success wasn't to keep moving forward. Starting in the late 1980s, taking small parts and stepping through some snobbery, she slowly began reinventing herself as a serious theatre actor if serious isn't too pompous a word. It certainly wasn't an overblown ambition. 
Established names within the theatre saw the potential in a seasoned pro with an appetite for something new and an astonishing work ethic. Here was somebody ready to earn her stripes anew. Luminaries like directors Sir Peter Hall and Michael Grandage responded positively. On her sea change, the actress herself said, I knew that people considered me very lightweight and that I'd have to do something about it. I knew I couldn't expect to go, here I am, classics please. That meant being prepared. You really have to prove yourself. Her credits include many Shakespeare plays directed by Grandage, formerly artistic director of the Donmar Warehouse, and she found much to play with in the comedic older women beloved of Shakespeare and Restoration farce. It's more than just a former kooky chick now doing dotty old dears. A lot of rich lived experience has informed roles like the nurse in Romeo and Juliet and others. Una understood their funniness and truthfulness and showed we shouldn't underestimate the capacity of the young to enjoy the company of older people. <laughs> there have been runs at the Old Vic and Chichester Festival Theatre. She played in the West End, in Coward's Star Quality and in Schiller's Don Carlos with Derek Jacobi. She has appeared in Le Cage of Rome, at the Menier Chocolate Factory, Pygmalion at the Theatre Royal Bar for Old Vic, and the family reunion at the Donbar. More recently, as part of the original cast of the new adapted play, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime at the National Theatre, she worked with actors decades younger than herself in a production renowned for its technical and physical demands. She described the two hour warm up as fierce, like the SAS. The young cast fondly teased her because she could still do things they couldn't. Because I'm a dancer, I've still got a bit of that, she teased back. In fact, she's still got a lot of that. And acting does demand a lot. Vocal skill, physical skill. It's about imagination, expression, intellectual leaps and intuition. You must observe and explain. You may be required to fight, and yes, to dance. It's a profession that demands you evolve. Una Stubbs is a shining, inspiring example of how we take our talent and grow. Her spirit and her love of painting her portrait of Grayson Perry is part of the Royal Academy Summer Exhibition this year. Made her a perfect fit to host the BBC's Big Painting Challenge recently. Once again, she connected instantly with a new audience. One fan, creatively inspired, sent her a cushion with Una's face embroidered on it as a thank you. Una thought, it brilliant. We can't quite match that today, but we pay our tribute. Una Stubbs, for your lifelong advocacy of creativity, for showing that talent doesn't dwindle but grows with age and experience, for showing us all that if we keep moving and keep working, we keep learning. We honour you today.
you're all very keen, but I just need you to hold that applause for one more moment. <laughs> Una Stubbs, I confer on you the award of Honorary Doctor of Arts. I congratulate you and welcome you amongst us. call upon Ms. Una Stubbs to address the Assembly. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I've had such a long life. That was such a long address. <laughs> sorry. But you cannot imagine what an honour this is. This is my first ever award, except for my three sons. so much and it's good to be back in Liverpool. I haven't been here for 50 years. <laughs> and my father worked in the local stocking factory and of course as was mentioned earlier we were here towards the end of the uh, war and then we had to leave to go to Slough. I've well travelled. And, and then when I got there of course I had a thick Leicestershire accent and um, one of the little girls from Slough said are you foreign? And I said, yes. <laughs> and hoped that they thought I'd come from really glamorous background or a country or whatever. But I've always considered myself to be in uneducated because I've only ever been taught to read and write and dance. So I'm so full in awe of what you're doing and how you're studying and everything. And I've been working without that education. I've been working solidly since I was 16, but there was a lot, lot of luck involved in all that time. But I have been tenacious and I have worked hard. And if I was to give any advice to anybody, I hope it doesn't sound patronizing, but I would say, get stuck in and really, really work hard. Don't give up. And at times be humble and don't be ashamed if sometimes you have to start at the bottom. Don't worry about that, and because I found that some of the grotty jobs I've done have led to the better ones. For example, things had gone very well, and then they took a dive. And I thought, oh, what do I do? And I, I accepted a job that was so mediocre, but I did it, and I earned a salary. But on that job was a girl who was going out with a producer, and she said, you've got to see this girl I'm working with. And I got the part of Summer Holiday. So you never know. It's better just to keep going and be proud and don't be too harsh on yourself. And I wish you all the very, very best and, that, and lots of love. Thank you so much.